Greetings, folks. This is Carlos, a.k.a. Handsome Fat Man, a.k.a. Axel Hander, a.k.a. whatever. Uh, this is guest commentary for Morn, fantasystrike.com Morn, or Mornisar, as his YouTube channel is. Shoutouts to Morn. We're going to be talking about his journey through Castlevania 4. You have no doubt seen the other commentary bits of the stages before this, uh, but this is the final stretch where we listen to some excellent Castlevania 1 remixed music as Morn heads down this descending section. There are a few shortcuts you can take if you're daring and jump at the right spot, but Morn wants to show us the game and be careful, as, you know, a smart player is wont to do. So he descends the stairs here, does a very daring jump instead of taking the stairs there, very nice. And he's gonna cross the Bridge of Great Collapsing. Collapsing! Because I need that extra A there. Decides to throw his boomerang and get hit by the bats behind him. But a slick jump. No, he doesn't jump. Never mind. I thought he was gonna be slick. He was not slick. Shoutouts to Morn, not being slick. Morn is gonna die here. Because one of those bats is gonna hit. No, maybe not. They're gonna fly up. And escapes death by the skin of his teeth. Grabs another heart. Hits back. Hits the candle. For no reason. Not sure why he did that. That's okay, though. I thought maybe he knew some secret I didn't. And now we head to the Blade Thing Tower, which has a very cool Castlevania 3 intro stage remix to it, and the Collapsing Stairs. Now, you don't see it, but uh, that little razor blade at the bottom is slowly ascending, and it is quite alarming to see the speed that it will catch you with if you let it get on screen, so more no doubt wants to stay ahead of it. Climb the steps, get rid of the mud man, and continue his journey to Dracula's Close Associates, which he will be fighting at the end of the stage. Ops to keep the cross. Kills the Mudman, even though he really doesn't have to. Gets a couple hearts. I think this is where the blade stops, so I think he's safe right now. I could be wrong. No, I think the blade would still come to that part, but it's okay. More knew he had time. So now he's reaching this point with the diagonal platforms, and there are some spiky roofs he's got to be careful for. So he's going to very carefully avoid them, swing from platform to platform, and continue ascending the tower. Very careful jump. And this part's a little difficult because the the roof is kind of tight and it's kind of narrow and the, the blocks are moving in that upwards diagonal kind of arc there and it can sometimes make this part harrowing, but it's not too difficult. And shoutouts to Morn, making that one little bit of life last. Congratulations for being a boss at Super Castlevania 4. Up whipping does uh, make short work of the Dalhin enemy. We'll no doubt do the same to this one. Eventually. There we go. So this should be the final ascent here. And this is kind of tough. The platforms uh, move to the right, but they start you off on the right. But there are spikes on the right too. So you have to kind of jump to and fro to get the rhythm down and make it to the door here. And now we enter my personal favorite area of the game with one of the best themes in the game, the Room of Close Associates. And we fight Slogra, Gaibon, and Death, one after another. Slogra might well be the toughest boss in this game, uh, contrary to the big joke that he is later in the series. Uh, part of the reason he's so difficult is because Simon Belmont's ability to whip in eight directions is just about useless against him, and that's part of the reason why Simon is so badass in this particular version of Castlevania. Things don't start out too difficult while Slog... not Slogra... yeah, Slogra, while he has a spear, but uh, it will soon become kind of difficult when he starts doing his... very difficult to read lunges which are nigh unavoidable, unless you know they're coming, and they're kind of random as far as I know. You can see more here jumping preemptively, trying to avoid them. And if uh, Slogger decides to be an asshole, he's going to end this run right away. Nope, he does not dash. 
Oh, he had one more bit of life left. Excellent dodge there by Morn. Defeat Slogra. And from here, the other bosses should be cake. Gonna grab a turkey leg, climb up the steps, and fight Slogra's associate, Gaibun. Shoutouts to Slogra and Gaibun for being a cool tag team, I guess. Yeah. So Gobrin, Gobrin, Gobrin. Gaibin isn't too difficult. Um, up whips and triple boomerangs make short work of him. Uh, he is probably a little more difficult than he is in, say, Symphony of the Night, uh, because there are a few more obstacles to consider in the fight, namely the stalagmites coming from the top. Stalactites, stalagmites, same thing. Three fireball spreads, Morn is not afraid. Morn is confident in his ability to take Gaibon out. Morn should probably be whipping up diagonally, but perhaps is bored of the fight and trying to make it a challenge for yourself. Shoutouts to making things a challenge for yourself. You only live once, apparently. Gaibon falls. Simon steps all over his course, no respect at all. And proceeds, any time now, to fight the master of our little trio here, Death. Now, if you've fought Death in Castlevania 1 or 3, you're going to be real disappointed with how easy this version is. But he's still a little tricky, you can't take him for granted. He also has some pretty damn cool sound effects to him and that glowing red cape which blew my friggin' mind when I was a kid. So, much like other incarnations of Death, he spawns scythes and flings them at you. Kind of lunges down here. But the attack to watch out for and perhaps the one where you can get the most damage off, uh, off on him, is this one here where he sucks you towards him while using his scythe uh, telepathically. Telekinetically, Carlos. Let's, let's, let's get our terms right. Takes a hit from the scythe, but de death is dead. Folks, thank you very much for watching Morn's Super Castlevania 4 commentary run. Uh, this has been Carlos, aka Specs, aka a billion other aliases. Uh, and stay tuned to watch Morn teach Dracula a lesson about not stealing all the biznatches. <laughs>